menu. And you know, if it works out well, then you know this is how the Lord will we'll, we'll chat again when the time comes. Okay. So anybody got something to share with us over the weekend? He's going to be first, and he's going to be last. Okay. So you turn the camera around and point all the way to that day to answer. <laughs> I'm sick. 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 Oh, you were driving. I don't think we can keep 
هي انسيه هيك هي اكثر كارو ما اخر كراي اه كل ما كارو هي يصير كل ما اخر There's a little something about Bolger House on the Rock, and then the house on the rock will stand. And they took the picture just at that point. As we said, the house on the rock will stand. I can just say that I was, I was really blessed. I felt that the Lord just started speaking to us from Friday night. Yeah. 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 And it was yeah. one conversation. And you know what the wonderful thing is? It wasn't that man and that man's way. It was the Lord speaking to me. Yeah. Yeah. You shut your eyes and the Lord was speaking mm. to me. And he said, mm. lots. And um, yeah, so obviously the opportunity, you know, we can't say what he said. <laughs> He said lots of things. Mm. It was precious. Yeah, and mm. the wonderful thing is, he says it's to your heart. Your heart. And, and then the Holy Ghost will bring it back to our remembrance and use it and affect uh, you know, what we do and the decisions we make and yeah, how we live our lives. And that's mm. also mm. to my opinion mm. to the fact that he was had a more intense desire and longing to mm. to, to save the lost, mm. to have yes. a soul mm. after the lost. You know, to, yeah, to desire Reach out to. to mm. Mm. And, right. and, and that the world will. But one of the things that's very difficult to convey after weekend like that is the spirit mm. of what's happening. Mm. Because you know, you're in it and you're there, and you can convey the words, mm. but to convey the spirit of this it's not easy. Mm. 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 Tell us more. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could remember everything. Yeah. Uh, Change microphone or are you going to leave with that one? I'm going to try. I, I don't want to um, recap what the weekend was about particularly, but just that there was an emphasis for us to know the power of the Spirit of God in our lives. Because, you know, we can try and do things and we can try and do things and we can end up just getting involved in dead works. Whereas the, the emphasis was know the power of the Holy Ghost and He'll bring a liberty, he'll bring a grace, he'll bring strength, he'll bring all those kinds of things into our hearts and lives. So for us to find that we're dependent on him, there was an emphasis about the disciples being told to wait in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high, before you know, beginning this exercise of building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there was a, an encouragement for us, you know, wait and know this power and anointing of the Spirit of God, and then don't then put it aside, embrace it, and let it be outworked. So an encouragement for each and every one of us to, to, to take our place. And, and yeah, then just be assured 
that there will be opposition. There will be trial. There will be difficulty. But again, don't depend on your ability to stick it out. <laughs> Rather know the power of the Spirit that then strengthens you during those times of trial and difficulty. So by the grace of the Lord, that's what we're about. It's all got to do with what we've been talking about. I was actually quite blessed because to me, there was a tremendous confirmation of the fact that we're in ace. We're in a walk. We're on a journey. We're participating. Click that little lever on the side, Miller. This side here by your this side. This side. Like pull it down this way. Yeah. So that we're in a race. And our race has to start. It has to endure. And it's going to finish. And to me, that was part of the theme of the weekend. So, you know, having started, that's great. But now there's this enduring, there's this affliction, there's this power of the Spirit, there's this walking as part of the body of Christ. There's all that's all got to do with our walk in building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then by the grace of God, there's a finish. <laughs> so whether I finish, my time comes to an end on this earth, or whether I finish when the trumpet sounds and time shall be no more, and we're changed in the twinkling of an eye and we meet the Lord Jesus in the air, you know, either way, I want to be found running my race at the spot where the Lord Jesus wants me to be when he comes or when I, when I die. So Peter had this incredible testimony, didn't he? And Paul had this incredible testimony that the Lord has shown me that I must lay off my body. I've run my race. I've finished my course. I've done what it was the Lord wanted me to do. I wonder how many of us would be able to say that today. I've run my race. I've finished my course course. And I'm exactly at the spot where the Lord wants me to be. I think I'm about a thousand kilometers behind. I don't know about you. <laughs> There's lots of catching up to do. But on the other hand, by the grace of the Lord, we're walking by faith, not so. So as much as we're growing, so I just think about it a little, you know, we've got Carl and Marilise at, at the house now, so you see these two little girls. Our oldest, I can never remember the older girl's name. Carissa. Chris is about nine, and little Marizel Mar Mar is about four. And they're as different as chalk and cheese. But, you know, they're two little girls at a particular stage of their lives. And if you like, the little one is perfect where she is. The older one is perfect where she is. And so don't think that you've got to be this incredibly mature, fulfilled, strong Christian, you know, immediately. It doesn't happen like that. What we are looking for, though, by the grace of the Lord, is that there's growth, that we're going on. We're not standing still. And that's the thing. If a little girl of three remains a little girl of three for the rest of her life, then what would everybody say? We are. There's Empire. Some... <laughs> Empire. <laughs> so the games they play. <laughs> it's just, you don't expect that. You, you expect a three-year-old to now become a four-year-old and to act like a four-year-old and a five-year-old and so on and so on. So th th there's, there's an, you know, you, you're not, how can I put it? You know, baby games don't satisfy you anymore. You, you've got to begin to grow. And so that's what we're talking about. But as a little three-year-old or a little four-year-old, perfect. So, you know, wherever you are in your experience in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be perfect at that spot. So don't think that you've got to be like somebody and, oh, I can never be like that. I'm sure little Marazel is saying is not saying that. She's not saying, I can never be like my mommy. She's saying, one day when I grow up, I'm going to be like my mommy. <laughs> you see? And, and so that's the same principle. So here we are. We're, we're running this race and we're going towards the finish. And Lord, as long as I am where you want me to be at this point in time, let me run the race with patience. So let's go and have a look at Hebrews. Last time we spoke from Hebrews chapter 3 and 4. And can I take you again to Hebrews 12? We've read it before, but it just continues to challenge our hearts. Have you switched microphone here? So Hebrews 12 verse 1 says what? Seeing. So, verse my old image says, Wherefore, seeing we also are? With what? 
Someone want to give me a translation of that? What, what do you think is being said? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with a great cloud witnesses. Second, can I draw a little cloud here? Or shall I draw a big cloud? <laughs> We're compassed about with a cloud. A cloud of witnesses. And, and, and really, folk, I believe with all my heart, here you are. Maybe this isn't a great cloud. <laughs> We're just a small cloud. But here's a cloud of witnesses all around me, continuously testifying to me about something. But besides this cloud that is where we are, on the weekend we experience there's a bigger cloud. And then when, what we're really talking about is what goes before in chapter 11, is this great cloud of witnesses. So there's, there are lots of people that are all around that are giving testimony. You find them here in the Word of God. Okay? You find them as you walk with Jesus. If you go and read a little bit about what people have done in the past, then there's a witness, there's a testimony. And so all around about us, there's a great cloud of witnesses. The day in which we live makes it very easy. We can have a click meeting. Anybody anywhere in the world can hear the word of God. We've got television. Anyone anywhere in the world can hear the word of God. We've got radio. <laughs> Anybody can hear the word of God. So there's a witness that's going out all the time, all over the world. And so we're compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. But if you look at Hebrews 11, then what, does, what do these witnesses tell us? What are they saying? So chapter 11 verse 1 says, what is faith? It's the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things that are not seen. And then it tells us that Something happened. Through faith, what happened? Or by, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. <laughs> now, that, that always kind of oops, tickles me a little bit. Sorry. What's a good report? Five out of five. Ten out of ten. <laughs> Or eight out of ten. It's a good report. Yeah. So a good report simply means that somebody's given or somebody's given a good testimony about what you've done. So what did these men obtain? A good report. Doesn't the Bible speak about a good name is more important than riches and whatever else? So doesn't a good report... I mean... How many people are mentioned here in Hebrews 11? I, I don't know, I haven't counted them, but are there a lot? Okay. Compare that to how many thousands came out of Israel. How, how many? Oh, millions. How many millions came out of Egypt into the promised land? Three million. How many of those names are mentioned in, in Hebrews 11? <laughs> Abraham was before that. Just Moses. Not even Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. So, you see? <laughs> yeah, Rahab is mentioned. So, not terribly many when we look at them. Not so. So, how many obtained a good report? You begin to think about it, don't you? Not that many. So out of the millions that have lived on the earth from Adam till here, there aren't too many mentioned. And all they obtained was a good report. <laughs> yes, that's encouraging. Because <laughs> what am I looking for? But is that what I'm looking for, Stevie? Or am I looking for recognition amongst men? I um, shouldn't be. Am I looking for praise? Am I looking for acknowledgement? Am I, what am I looking for? Or am I simply saying, I'm walking by faith, and if I get a good report from God, that's all I want. That's what it's all about. That's what counts. And to get a good report from God, what, is, what does the Scripture tell me? Oh, you've got to be this perfect person. Was David perfect? But what was he? 
He was a man after God's own heart. And that's what I want to be by the grace of God. I say it carefully, but I'm not looking to be perfect in everything that I do because I'm going to come short. And you and all of us are going to come short. But man, I want to be a man after God's heart. I want to have a heart that's like God's heart so that I can be a man after God's heart. <laughs> I, I want him to make me like him. I want to have a heart that's desirous of the things of God. I want to have a place in his house. I don't want to have a place where I'm recognized necessarily by people or by men. I'm not particularly looking for riches. I'm not particularly looking for something that's going to satisfy in this world. But man, what I'm really looking for is to hear those words that the Lord Jesus quoted when he said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of thy Lord. That means more to me than anything else. Seriously, how many sons do you know that are desperately wanting recognition from their father and not getting it? And they may have achieved incredibly in this world. They might have reached top echelons and skills and whatever else, but they haven't got their father's respect. And that's devastating for a young man, isn't it? And so by the same token, I'm, I'm not talking about devastating, but I'm talking about the satisfaction of knowing that I'm acceptable to my heavenly father. And that's a completely different thing, isn't it? How can I be? Well, the Bible tells me very simply. It says, it speaks about through faith, and it speaks about Abel offering a better sacrifice and Enoch walking with God. But what does it say in verse 6? Does yours say if we don't believe? Yeah, that clunker biki honest. What my old English says is without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that's slightly different from saying, as jy nie geloof nie. Wat sê die Afrikaans? Sonder geloof. Dit is a bykie anders dan as die wat nie geloof nie. But it kind of means the same thing, but it's slightly different. Now, it's, 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 it's just this thing. There's this wonderful gift that God has given us, this gift of faith. And then what does it tell us? What's the next little bit that says? He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So it, it's, it's so basic, isn't it? Those who have signed on the church's membership roll. Is that what it says? No, <laughs> it's never what it says. <laughs> Those who never lose their temper. Hmm? I'm provoking you. I'm wanting you to think about it. Those who have a personal relationship with God of knowing Him. Uh, yeah, and knowing that He's a rewarder, those that seek Him. Having that confidence. Knowing that as I reach out for Him, He reaches out to me. If I seek, said the Lord Jesus, I will find. If I knock, the door shall be opened. If I ask, I shall be given. So what's my heart? How many of you know little children who don't ask questions? Little children are always asking questions. What's the cow doing in the field? He's eating grass. How does he eat the grass? With his tongue. How does he eat the grass with his tongue? How does the cow make milk? They're always asking questions. What are they doing? They're learning, but can I put it like this way? They're seeking. They're wanting to find out. So am I just saying, well, God, you're over there, and I'm over here, and never the twain shall meet, and thank you very much. Or am I seeking? Am I asking? Am I wanting to develop this relationship? You see? So that's what it's all about. So it's simple, But it's got to be a, a, a relationship that's developed by faith, because I can't see him. And so by faith, I'm believing that God is, that he exists, and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
So Lord, help me that I, I, I grab hold of the simple principle. All right, so now we've got these witnesses. We've got Abel, we've got Enoch, we've got verse 7. Noah, Noah he was warned of God. We've got verse 8, Abraham. Abraham, and he sojourned in the land. And then just an interesting point, verse 11, what did Sarah do? Through faith Sarah received strength and conceived seed because she just simply believed God. Verse 13, what does it say about these? That's quite something, isn't it? They died, how? They died in faith and not receiving. Am I going to spell that right? Sorry. Not receiving the promise. How many of us feel if we don't receive the promise, we're going to stop believing? <laughs> There's a tough cookie die. So if I don't receive, I'm going to stop believing. But it says, all of these died having not received the promise. Now, okay, we can, we, we can begin to look at it and say, what does he mean? In this case, there was a promise of inheriting the land. And at that stage, Abraham didn't get the land. Isaac didn't get the land. Jacob didn't get the land. It was 400 years later before the nation of Israel got the land. But they died. Yeah. But these guys who didn't have to fight for it yet, they died. They died believing. They didn't stop believing. They died in faith. In other words, my faith is not based on God doing things for me. My faith is based on He is God. Because he that cometh to God must believe that He is he is, I am. <laughs> he is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And so we learn the lesson. He's got the God of Abraham who called him out and into, but didn't actually fulfill, didn't bring that promise to a conclusion for him. But he gave him another promise. He said, you're going to have a son. That promise was fulfilled, wasn't it? And so Abraham wasn't left completely with nothing being fulfilled in his life. God brought him into the land and he said, this is the land. But then he said, the Amorites, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. You're going to have to wait. And sometimes God says to us, we have to wait. And we love waiting, don't we? <laughs> How many? You just love waiting. <laughs> You're changing. <laughs> Who goes to the dentist and gets told to sit down and wait? And how many of us love it? Eh? It's like torture. You go to the doctor. I, you know, I mean, it's just, can you ever keep the doctor waiting? But man, he can keep you waiting, can't he? That's right. If you get there, then you go to the back of the queue, you know. So your appointment's for quarter past, and you arrive at, you know, 20 minutes past. And never mind, he's still busy with a guy that you should have been finished with. Nevertheless, you go plunk to the back of the queue, <laughs> and you have to sit. Who enjoys that? Hey? <laughs> now, come on. If my father tells me to wait, it doesn't mean I'm going to enjoy the waiting. But am I, going to, am I going to keep believing? That's the difference. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that sometimes happens too. When dad says, go to your room <laughs> and wait. <laughs> Then you know that's not pleasant. <laughs> okay, so I don't think God's saying that to us. Thank you. But there is a time that you need to wait. And 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 boy, we don't like waiting. So Abraham had to wait. And there he was. How old was he when God called him? No, no. When God called him, right in the beginning, when God called him. Well, he was old, but he wasn't that old. Actually, we don't quite know when God called him, because when God called him, his father was still alive. Yes. And so he comes to a point in his life where he's, I can't remember now, how old was he when Ishmael was born? Well, it was 13 years before Isaac, wasn't it? Between Ishmael was 13 years old when Isaac was born, and that was 100, so help me with my arithmetic. 87. He was around about 87 when Ishmael was born. And, you know, all that time, no child. And now he thinks, here's my boy. 
You know, God's given me this son. It's wonderful. And God didn't rebuke him. God didn't tell him, hey, you actually got it wrong. He left it. And then 13 years later, he said to them, this is not going to be your heir. It's not going to be this one. <laughs> Sarah is going to have a child. What was he waiting for? Can, can, can I put it like this? He was waiting for death. Yeah, not physically die, but to become dead in the sense of being able to have children. Abraham was past age. Sarah had been barren all her life. And now she enters into menopause. I'm not going to have any more children. And bang, God says, now's the time I'm going to perform a miracle. What's he doing? He's showing who's God. He's showing that out of death, he brings life. He's showing that he can do the impossible. And so all he asks of Abraham and Sarah is that they believe. So when Sarah hears that she's going to have a child, what's her reaction? <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> eh? What did the children of Israel say when, when Moses told them, tomorrow you'll have flesh to eat? They laughed. <laughs> so it's our natural reaction. Have you ever laughed at something that God's told you? I have. And that's what we do. Hey, Lord, stir my heart that I don't laugh at God's promises, but I actually believe it by faith. Just take hold of it. Say, Lord, you said it, I believe it. That's it. I don't have to strive to pump up my faith. <laughs> I've got to have more faith. I've got to have more faith. And so I can't pump up my faith. No, no, no. It's just I believe that He is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And Lord, whether that reward is going to come now, in this life, or whether that reward is going to come in eternity, is actually irrelevant. You are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. And if I don't get the rewards I'm looking for in this life, then I'm going to say my father has a reason for it. And what he's got for me is a far more eternal weight in glory. Because he wants me to have a good report in my journey. And so here are all these guys having not received the promise, but they obtained something. They obtained a good report. And Lord, help me <laughs> that I'm not looking in that sense, you know, ah, just silly little stuff. I'm going to believe God to give me a Mercedes Benz. And so, you know, he's going to give me a Mercedes Benz. And, he's going to, and, and, and he doesn't. Now what, has God failed? No, he hasn't. Because I've simply believed that he is going to give me a good report. <laughs> And that's, that was also an answer. Yeah, because who knows what that Mercedes-Benz might take my heart away from the Lord. So, Lord, you know, it's just a different thing. What did they say? Let's read verse 13, 13 again. These all died, in fact, not having received the promises, but having... Aha! How far can you see? They've, again, we're thinking naturally, eh? I can see so far. About eight on to the horizon. Okay. And in the desert? Maybe like. Oh, did you hear there's going to be a land speed record attempt in the Kalahari? I don't know when it's going to happen. They're building this rocket car in England, which the guys are testing, and they say they're going to do their run here in the Kalahari. And there are, I don't know how many hundreds of people that have been given jobs to now go and pick up all the stones <laughs> and clear this runway. <laughs> Quite incredible. How did I get to that? Mm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as far as you can see. How far can you see? Can I see to eternity? By faith. Is that where I'm looking? Is that the goal? Is that the prize? Is that the winning post, as it were? Eternity. Or am I looking for it now? Now, God, you've got to bless me now. I've got to have your things now. I've got to have, and I'm looking for stuff down here, or am I looking at eternity? They saw them afar off, and what happened? They were persuaded of them. How persuaded am I? It was quite a challenge, isn't it? I, I'll be persuaded as long as. Yes, but I'll only be persuaded as this works or as that works, and as long as my life is comfortable, and as. Or am I persuaded? 
period. Full stop. The conditions don't matter. Think about Job. I, I, I get challenged big time every time I read the book of Job. Eh? In one day, one day, can you imagine that? 24 hour, I don't even think it was 24 hours, was it? But let's say 24 hours. He lost everything. All his children. Except, except his wife. <laughs> except his wife. But in, in a sense, he lost her as well because she came to the point of saying, why don't you just curse God and die? So, but everything else, gone. How would you feel if that happened to you? Lord, would I still believe after that? That's going to be a real kind of exercise. Lord, do I believe that you are and that you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you or I believe that you're keeping me safe? Can you see the difference? God, why didn't you keep me safe? Why did you allow this to happen to me? It's what Job said. <laughs> he didn't know that somebody had spoken up in heaven and said, Job only serves you because you protect him. Just take the hedge away around about him and you'll see he'll curse you to your face. And God said, okay, I'll take the hedge away. Lord, please don't say that about me. But Lord, if you do, give me grace. Give me grace. What an what a, what a exercise. So yeah, when I read Job, I say, sure, Lord. <laughs> and he just said, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Yet will I trust him. And I know that what? That my Redeemer lives. And he will stand in the latter day upon the earth. How did Job know that? Yes. <laughs> He knew it by revelation. And then what else did he say? Well, those are all the 101 questions. But there was another statement that God made. Job made. Though worms eat my flesh, yet will I see God. How far could he see? Into eternity. He could see, to the, he could see the resurrection. He could see the things of the Spirit. Can you see the resurrection? Well, by answer. But really now, in my spirit, in my spiritual vision, can I see the resurrection? Because right then, everything else pales into insignificance. And it, you, know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I can see afar off. Jesus said, He will raise me from the dead. Jesus said... <laughs> that he'll, I'll stand before him for reward. Jesus said, I will rule and reign with him. Can I see into eternity? And so that's enough for me. doesn't matter what happens between now and then. I can see afar off. And in seeing them afar off, what were they? They were persuaded. So how far do I see? Because as far as I see, that's how persuaded I'll be. Yeah, they were persuaded of them. And not only were they persuaded them, what did they do? They embraced them. How do you embrace the resurrection? Think about it. Okay, into the logic. But what did these guys see? Whatever they saw, they embraced. By faith. <laughs> so can I say it like this? Faith gives you long arms. To reach into eternity and to, to bring it into your experience. So that when they crucified the saints, when they threw them to the lions, when they bent them at the stake, they could see a fall off. And they actually embraced it by saying, our lives we will not love to the death. Because we've embraced the concept of the resurrection. We've embraced the concept of eternity. We've embraced the reality that it's not the flesh, it's the spirit. We've embraced the reality that the things are seen are temporal. The things that are not seen are eternal. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so they didn't just see it. They actually embraced it. In fact, that's by the grace of the Lord what we've got to do. We, we need to embrace it. Bring it into our experience, into our lives. So they saw, can, I, can I say it again? Absolutely. Everything the Lord says, embrace it. 
and don't just let it be there. <laughs> you grab hold of it, draw it to yourself. I mean, I don't know, but what's the Afrikaans word for embrace? That's a lekker word, no? What do you do when you omhel someone? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But you know, you don't do what the Brits do. You know what the Brits do, hey? How do you do? This is not omhel, no? I mean, as you want omhel, then you give them a bear hug, don't you? It's even better than the English embrace. And if something's embracing, it's all round, isn't it? Yeah, I'll buy a hug. <laughs> It's a real embrace. So when they saw these things, they were persuaded of them and they embraced them. And what did they do? They confessed it. Yeah. <laughs> they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Now, now what do you do when you confess something? You say so. <laughs> you say so. You admit it. You declare it. And there are lots of ways that you can admit and declare. One of the ways is the way you live. Not so. So you say it with your mouth, but you live it. People can see that what you're concerned about is not now. What you're concerned about is eternity. You've got a different spirit. You've got a different attitude. You've got a different way. And so that's what these guys saw. They saw these things afar off. They were persuaded them. They embraced them. And they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. Because they that say such things declare plainly that they're, they're seeking a country. They're on a journey. <laughs> they're running a race. They're looking for something. How many of you had to look for the, what's it called? Mountain Breeze, is it? How many of you had to look for Mountain Breeze Resort? How many shot past the entrance? Even with GPS, GPS cord. Because that's where, that's, where, that's where the coordinates are. The, the entrance is about 600 meters early. <laughs> and so you miss it. You see? So that, you're looking for something. What are they looking for? They seek a country. <laughs> I'm looking for a place. <laughs> a better country. A heavenly country. <laughs> a heavenly home. I'm not looking for an earthly thing. I'm looking for a heavenly thing by the grace of God. So, you know, these are the heroes of faith. These are the cloud of witnesses around us. These are the things that they're telling us. And they've gone before, haven't they? They've, they've passed out of this life. Praise the Lord for the rain. <laughs> I wonder if it's um, affecting the sound here, but it's okay. So, no, it's fine. So, you know, here, here are just all these heroes... Of faith, not so. They did incredible things and walked. Look at verse 12. What shall I more say? Because time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David and of Samuel and of the prophets. What did they do? Through faith they subdued kingdoms. Through faith they wrought righteousness. Through faith they obtained promises. Verse, verse 33. Sorry, what did I say? Oh, sorry. No wonder you're confused. All right. Verse 32. What shall I more say? Because time would fail to, for me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David and of Samuel and of the prophets who through faith did, did incredible things. They subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises, although some of them didn't. Okay? They stopped the mouths of lions. Verse 34. They quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Who quenched the violence of fire? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who can remember their Jewish names? Mishael, I think, was the one. I can't remember the others. Because okay, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were actually their Gentile names. Okay, so they had Jewish names. But they quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. They, out of weakness, were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. They turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Who was that? No, 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 no. There is no Old Testament. Woman. The lady that looked after Elisha. Yeah. Her son died. Yeah. And he was raised to life. Okay. But what happened to others? They were tortured. Not accepting deliverance. And? 
can I put it in the earlier words, that they might obtain a good report? Because they're looking at the resurrection. One, they didn't compromise. What, did, what happened to others in verse 36? Their trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yeah, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment, who ended up in prison. You've just been reading about him. In prison. Joseph, sold as a slave, ended up in prison. Eh? Bonds and imprisonment. And other prophets. And verse 37? I don't know who was stoned in the Old Testament, but yeah. But there were people who were stoned. That's what they say. In fact, they were sawn asunder. That is terrible. But that was one of the ways that enemies dealt with enemies in those days. Can you imagine being sawn asunder? Could be. <laughs> but, but it speaks about enemies being destroyed and then being put to the sword. Not the sword. Being sawn asunder. Terrible. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. They were destitute, afflicted, tormented. And that's the key, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Verse 39. These all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. What promise is this now? The promise of eternal life. The promise of the resurrection. Because God, having provided some better thing for us, they receive not the promise. No one, no one has experienced the resurrection yet until Jesus comes. Nobody's come into this land that they were really looking for. The land that is God's land. They had an earthly land, but there's a, there's a better land. There's a heavenly country. There's a heavenly city. None of them received it. None of us have received it. In the spirit, yes, we have. Because it speaks about the Jerusalem which is above as the mother of us all. So there is a heavenly Jerusalem. But we haven't yet seen the reality of that heavenly Jerusalem outworked. It's still by faith. The one in their bodies. No, not yet. They're waiting for us. They're waiting for us. They're, they're in heaven, but they haven't got their resurrection bodies. They're still restricted. Well, they're not really sleeping, but they're, they're contained. They're restricted. Yeah. Well, he is there. Yes. He hasn't got his resurrection body yet. <laughs> they're still in the spirit. They're still waiting for their resurrection bodies. They're not asleep. The Bible tells us that not asleep, really. Like too many places it tells us about it. We can talk about that another day because our time is short. But they're, they're alive. But they're alive in the Spirit. Because the thing is, this, this last little phrase, without us, they should not be made perfect. And when will our perfection come? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the glory of that resurrection we shall share. That's when we're going to be made perfect. And what's going to happen to them? The same. Because those, how does Paul put it? Those who have died before will rise first. And we will not prevent, in other words, we won't go before them, but they will be raised, and as they are raised, we will be changed. And together we'll meet the Lord in the air. So God's keeping it until... Until that day. Are you going to get to the finish? By the grace of God. In fact, that's all we can say. You know, on, on the one hand, I'm confident and I say yes. But you know where my confidence is? In Jesus. I'm not going to get there because I've got strong faith. I'm not going to get there because I'm so good and I'm so capable and I'll, I'll do it. I'm going to get there because Jesus has done it. And all I can do is simply by faith and hold on to him. Remember we read it last week. Holding the beginning of your confidence steadfast unto the end. 
So by the grace of the Lord, I'm saying, Jesus, you have died, you are buried, you rose again from the dead. And you promised me that you will raise me from the dead. And I have confidence, because you overcame death, you will overcome my death. And you know, when Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave, he didn't give him a glorious resurrection body. He got his same old body back. It died again. <laughs> but the body of Jesus is a different body. It's a glorious resurrection body. It's a body that's able to ascend into heaven. It's a body that with closed doors is able to appear in the midst of them. Lazarus could do that after his resurrection, but Jesus could, <laughs> because he's got this wonderful, new, glorious resurrection body. That's what he promises to you and I. And so, Lord, by, by, your, by grace, I'm going to say, I'm going to run this race until that day. And if I die before that, that's fine. I'm going to die in faith, believing that he will raise me on that day. Yes, they are. Not the same day. Separated by a thousand, a little bit more than a thousand years. Because after the thousand years, then the graves will be opened and all will come out of the grave. We'll see what? Yes. Yeah. No, in other words, they're not going to see open graves. No. They're going to say a Sputnik spacecraft came from Durangon from another constellation and took all these funny people away. That's what they're going to say. That's why they've got to prove that there's life out there in the universe. Because once they can show that there's life out there in the universe, then they can say, oh, some you know, flying saucer came by and took all these pe funny people away. They'll be able to explain it away. That's why people are seeing all these hohomanikis things that appear. Yuck. Is it wet? <laughs> Probably Coke. <laughs> so there's a very interesting book that someone's written called Alien Intrusion. And it's about all these things that people are seeing as aliens. And it's amazing how people who've had those kinds of visitations get saved and they never see those, have those visitations again. So you begin to wonder, what's the source of it? And this guy's actually gone into it. He's interviewed people. He's, he's, they've made a film about it. You know, it's a documentary. And the interesting thing is that, say, once people come to Jesus, those things vanish. But where do they come from in the first place? They come from the powers of darkness. And that's what this guy says. Now you tell unbelievers that. So, we didn't even read chapter 12 and verse 1. Let's go and read it quickly. Wherefore, seeing we also now are compassed about with these great cloud of witnesses, what should we be doing? We should lay aside every weight. We should lay aside the sin which so easily besets us. And we should run with patience the race that is set before us. Running the race is not so difficult, eh? But running the race with patience, that's a little bit more difficult. And how do you run the race? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. What is the joy set before you? The resurrection of sitting down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's the joy that's set before you. You know that you're going to be rule and reign with Jesus Christ. You're going to sit in his throne, as it were, for eternity with him. That's why we need to have a good report from now till then so that we can be with him. But that's the joy that's set before us. And so what am I looking for? I'm looking for my reward down here. I'm looking for a comfortable life here. Lift up your head. See? Afar off. Yeah, look on those which are above. So Lord, help us, eh? Because, as you said, Monday morning when you get back into the grind, when you get back into life, when you get back into work, you get hammered, don't you? And so the more you get hammered, the more what you do? You look down. <laughs> Lift up the hands which hang down. Lift up the feeble knees. Make straight paths for your feet, as the Scripture encourages us. And so thank you, Lord, for this cloud of witnesses. 
that constantly tell me there's a resurrection hope. And thank you, Lord, for this cloud of witnesses that are constantly telling me, press on, run the race. We're going to stand by each other. We're going to back one another. We're going to bear one another's burdens until the day that Jesus comes. And so, Lord, <laughs> I want to finish the course by the grace of God. Believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that seek him. Yes. Yeah. That's the picture. So as they journeyed through the wilderness, there was the cloud and the pillar of fire. And under the cloud, what did they find? Nana. Following the cloud, what did they find? Okay. Shade in the daytime, warmth in the sunshine. But following the cloud was the rock where, where, where the water was. <laughs> where did the quails come down? Where the cloud was. Where was the glory of God manifest? Where the cloud was. And so, you know, Numbers is an incredible book. You think Numbers, ugh, how boring. But man, when you begin to read the book of Numbers, it says the, that God went before them in a three-day journey. And then I love this little phrase, to search out a resting place for them. Isn't that lovely? Hey, Lord. And, and, and why? Death, burial, resurrection. And Jesus is coming back in the cloud. <laughs> So, Lord, hey, there's just so much testimony continuously. Help me to grab hold of it and say, I believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him.